Me and Cindy come to order for me 101 is back in session. We're back on the record, Peter Garcia. Bennett is present, all council are present, the Spanish interpreters uh, are likewise present. And at this time, people may continue the presentation of victim impact. Um, good morning, Your Honor. I want to start by telling you a little about myself. I want you to know who I was before this monster Nisa Joaquin raped me and destroyed me forever. I was born and raised I was born and raised in Alisa de Mundo Church. Ever since I can recall in Alisa, ever since I can recall I thought of the church as my home, that one place you come back no matter what. As a child, along with the other children in the church, we were always taught to love the apostle above all things. We were taught to sing songs for him about him in all of our church services. I sing him songs of love in church and outside of church on a constant basis. We were, we were taught that the only reason we have life, food, clothing, and a home is because of him. We were raised to believe that if we were the source of a family for the apostle, or we provide him any joy, that we were going to be blessed by God and be saved. We were taught that the apostle was our father and loved us. We were, we were indoctrinated to call the apostle Papi, Daddy. It was always Papi Samuel or Papi or Daddy Nason. All of the children and adults in Andalus del Mundo are taught that an apostle's wishes are godly commands. All of our temples had his name or his initials instead of Christian symbols. He was our Christ. He, when his father died and he took over the church, he removed the signs that said holiness to Christ and replaced it with his name and his logo. He painted all the churches tones of blue because it was his favorite color. He was our everything and we were happy to do whatever he commanded. We were also indoctrinated to believe that if we did not obey him, God would punish us. If we were to say no, we were ashamed and called apostates. Being called an apostate was the worst thing you could ever be called in Alus del Mundo Church. You could be the worst of the worst sinner, but an apostate was even worse than that. An apostate would go to hell no matter what. If you're a good person but you don't believe in Nathan, you're going to hell. You believe in Christ and God and live faithfully, but unless you accept Nathan as the voice of God on earth, you are going to hell. I was a good, faithful girl. I had good grades and had been in church choir since I was 10 years old. As a child, I always wanted to serve God so my mom could be blessed. She raised, she raised me on her own as a single mother. And I wanted nothing but her to be proud. And this innocence was taken away when it my abuse started. Nisan damaged me forever. Nisan, that's on. Now I'm talking to you. I want you to hear my voice. You destroyed me. You took everything from me. You put a hole in my life and forever changed my perception of reality. I will never be that same person again. You knew how to prey on us, and you used our wishes for eternal life and salvation to abuse us. You had your groomers prep me and other little girls for your filthy desires. The day you raped me, you told me I cannot have a boyfriend because you were my special boyfriend, and also my father. The sexual grooming for me began at 15, but the mental grooming to love you began when I was a little girl. You isolated me and separated me from friends and family who didn't attend church. I was not allowed to have friends at school who were not from church. I loved to play sports but was not allowed to join any teams because I was supposed to be at your disposal at all times. I was taken out of school all the time to serve you. My grades suffered because I was made to serve you. I miss going to school dances and no friends. I miss a lot of typical teenage 
activities because of you. Your actions did shock me, but your groomers kept you forcing and indoctrinating, teaching, stating that whatever the servant of God wants is approved by God because he is the representative of God on earth. I was always told that if I didn't do things I was, I was told to do, then I would bring shame to my family. I was also told that if I didn't do certain things, it was because I didn't have enough faith. You and your groomers used the Bible as a weapon for our grooming. You took advantage of the saddest vulnerability. You weaponized my father's absence in my life. And you used it against me. Alondra, you would repeatedly tell me that I have no one to defend me, no father to protect me or provide for us. You told me that you were my father and my protection. And right after you said that, you raped me. Yes, you raped me. You did not only force me to perform oral sex on your disgusting genitals. You penetrated my fragile body. I'm not that little fatherless girl that was scared anymore. I have my own voice to defend myself from you and others like you. I was willing and wanting to use it by telling my story at trial. I was robbed of this opportunity, so I will use this space to tell you what a despicable piece of filth you are. I was willing to sacrifice my dignity once more and allow the prosecutor to show the child pornography sent, you, sent to you of my bare body. But it was not allowed. I wanted to show your church and the world the evidence there is, but that you were scared to tell all your dirty secrets out. You are a disgrace to the human race. Your Honor, I want you to know that before and during and even after the sexual abuse incidents, I was read Bible verses to make me think it was okay. Even church officials like Alba Monsalvo Lopez, probably sitting in this court today, to try to convince me and my family on different occasions that whatever happened was okay because he was serving a God. Alba Monsalvo Lopez was my pastor's wife, a clergy member and church attorney. She took an oath before God to protect the souls and children of congregation and then took an oath to uphold the law as an attorney and failed miserably on both counts. She violated her duty to protect me and in doing so she helped Nathan continue his sexual abuse against me. She does not deserve either position. She had full knowledge of what happened to me and even cried to my mom, stating that she could not believe my story. She still sat here on Nason's team the day of his plea. She still protects him and defends him. She represents all the pastors and church officials in this church, Your Honor. They will never believe the children. They will never protect the children in that with their mundo. Alba, how can you show your face in this court knowing that you were an accessory to this crime? As part of the legal team, I'm sure you've seen all of the evidence and I'm disgusted that you still stand in support of this disgusting human being. Your Honor, after Nathan ripped me apart, raped me, and shattered my soul, I became so I became severely depressed and for a long time I was unable to even get out of my bed. I even tried to kill myself so many times. <laughs> I tried to numb the pain I was going through, but nothing would work, and nothing still would never work. <laughs> Everyone at church would talk about me saying I'm gone crazy because I did not want to serve the pastor anymore. I still suffer from depression, trust issues, constant panic attacks. Anxiety. I will continue to struggle with those issues forward until I die.
my sense of views affect the way I see the world and the way I interact with people. I distrust people and have difficulties in relationships and friendships. He abuses power not only as it pertains to me and the other Jane Doe's, but also as it pertains to the church. This pedophile has shown no remorse for what he has done. He has not taken responsibility for what he has done. Instead, he calls himself the victim. In his letters to the church, he has told them he's never, he never did the things he has been accused for, and for three years they have believed him. Nasson, for three years you have told the church members your rights have been violated by this court. You have lied to them about wanting to go to trial, about not knowing who the Jangles are. You know who we are. You have known all along. Here we are. Look at us. Here we are. Look. You want to continue having the power over the church members. The council of bishops, your enablers, and you can only do so much by lying to them. You told the church members on the day you pleaded guilty that you pleaded guilty not because you were guilty, but because your rights were violated and you were never going to have a fair trial. You told them you wanted to spare the members the grief of going through a trial. You said the judge denied you the right to have your witnesses testify and deny your defense the right to show our messages or question us in per person. Your enablers told the church members that you cannot have a fair trial because the judge did not release our identities to the public. All five Jane Doe's were ready to face you in the trial and waited for that opportunity for three years. Your Honor, we wanted our day in court. We wanted to face our sexual predator. We were deprived of that right when the, when the Attorney General's office decided to reach an agreement with Nason. I would like this court to know I was not informed, nor did I consent to negotiating with this rapist. We were informed after our decisions have been made. Nason, you're a coward. And unfortunately, this plea will allow you to serve a ridiculous prison sentence you are getting. And then you will be released to your mansion paid by the church members. You and your family see the church as a business and have made your fortunes at the back of the members. You will then continue to abuse young girls again because the fanatics will bring you their own children. The church is already posting comments that they support you and will be one waiting for you for your release. The pastors are telling the members that anything said in court is fake news. Your Honor, Nathan took away our innocence. And now our voice has been silenced by not allowing us the right to confront Nathan in trial. They said they, said they just wanted to protect us, so what is there to protect when the damage is already done? We wanted to defend ourselves and have evidence out in public so other victims can have more courage to speak up. We were unable to tell our stories in court. I am here because I want the world to know what a horrible, disgusting, horrendous person you are, and that's one. I hope that my story and courage to face Goliath will open people's minds and eyes to the truth. I want to give other victims the courage to speak up. Your fanatic followers say we have made up lies, but why would a 15 year old make up a lie about such a powerful person? Knowing she would lose her church, her family, and be publicly ridiculed. It doesn't make sense, right? Your Honor, we are doing this because we want to tell our truth. And hopefully with our truth, we can help other abuse victims speak up. I know a lot of victims don't want to speak up because it's hard to accept what he's done. It's hard to believe that such a vile behavior comes from a so-called man of God. It's hard knowing that none of your family will ever believe you. It's hard because after you speak up, you're going to think you're 
family and friends will be there for you. But they're just going to turn their back and call you a liar. And go to Nason and believe Nason. A person they don't know nothing about. I was once in that position of being scared to speak up, but why would we let this abuse keep happening? When it's been happening for almost 100 years, this has to stop. I call all the victims to not be afraid. There are many pastors from this church that are pedophiles and rapists, but you did not hold them accountable or report them because they had a hold on you. And that is how you get the endless cycle of child abuse in your disgusting family and bishop circle. Why do the church members keep letting our children get abused? It's so sick and it's so sad. You're a dangerous man and have dangerous people around you who will do your dirty work. Your Honor, after this trial, we're not going to be safe. Why would a man that claims to be serving a God need bodyguards anywhere and everywhere he goes? I thought you were our safe place. I thought church was the safest place, but it was my worst nightmare. Your Honor, I, do, I know a sentence has been agreed upon, but I ask you to reconsider and give, us this, give this horrible human being the maximum sentence. Four more years. I know it seems like nothing, but it takes power away from him. The sense is a joke compared to what he's done to us. And all the victims who cannot speak up. When Nathan, once Nathan is in, out of court and out of prison, his people will now be able to harm us and go after us. I really hope things can change for other victims. I hope other victims that speak out are not discouraged by this outcome. I hope they get their justice. I pray other girls and boys that have abuse come out and tell their story put in, to put an end on this cult and this predator. Respectfully, James O. Thank you. <laughs>